Hey guys, welcome, welcome. It's Krista Watson here from Krista Quilts and we are back with Facebook Lives. I took a couple weeks off of doing these and now we're starting up again and I'm so excited, I'm so excited. So it is uh, Tuesday, September 1st and live time right now is 3 p.m. So while I wait for everybody to kind of jump on and make sure this is uh, working, I'll say a quick hello. Uh, if you guys can see me and hear me and jump on, yep, say hi, say where you're from. I am using uh, StreamYard, which is a free service, which allows me to uh, uh, stream this on Facebook. And it also allows me to show you guys some slides at the same time. So yay, good to see you guys. So the only downside of using the StreamYard is when your comments pop up, I don't necessarily see your name unless you give uh, StreamYard permission. So you can give them permission and then it can show your name. But I also have my phone so I can kind of see what's happening and everything at the same time. So welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to see you here. Yeah, say hi. Give me some uh, some likes and, and uh, whatever you can click on to say hi. We'll kind of get everybody jumping on here again. Um, I'm here in Las Vegas broadcasting from my little home studio. You can kind of see my sewing machine in the background and quilt up on my design wall and really excited. So today our focus is going to be on the Modern Logs Quilt Along but just like all of my previous live sessions, I want you guys to be able to ask any questions you have about quilting, because what I wanna do is I just wanna do a weekly check-in with you guys and help you guys make better quilts. Um, I started this up a couple months ago into the pandemic and then kind of had to take a little break last few weeks. Uh, we're building a pool. Um, we had kind of some issues, you know, medical issues with some family and all that kind of stuff. But now I'm back and ready to do these Facebook Lives again. So, hey, Diane from Nebraska and Milo and, uh, uh, Diane from South Carolina. So I'm starting to see some of your names pop on here. That's really good. Once I know we have enough people in the session, we can kind of get going, but I'm starting to see everything. I'm just going to kind of grab my phone, make sure I can see everything ha happening and really happy to see all of you guys. Yay. So this is how this is going to work. Um, normally these lives can go anywhere from 30 minutes, 45 minutes up to an hour, kind of depending on you guys, depending on your questions. I started at three o'clock Pacific. And then if we don't have a lot of questions It'll be shorter if we have more questions it will go longer so glad to see you guys the way this is going to work is um after we get through this little introductory stuff and everything's working i will go ahead and do a little powerpoint presentation that i have created for you guys and while i'm doing the presentation it'll be harder to see your comments so the easiest thing to do is um, when the PowerPoint comes on, go ahead and type up your comments, but don't hit send. Then when I pop up on the screen again, like, you know, full frame, then we can do the Q&A. So in other words, once I do the PowerPoint, we'll do that first, then we'll do the Q&A at the end. But as I'm talking, if you think of things and you want to ask me questions, go ahead and type them. And then when I get to the Q&A session, then we'll go ahead and do those live. So anyway, I've missed these chats. It's so good to see you guys. I see a lot of familiar faces and stuff. So anyway, so the, the kind of new and improved, I'm calling this the Modern Logs Q&A QAL or Q QAL Q&A. So we just barely kicked off the Modern Logs quilt along and that is this pattern here. But even if you don't want to make the quilt, you can still come along for the chat. We're going to focus a lot on this particular pattern, but a lot of the things that we're doing, cutting and sewing and starching fabric and machine quilting and all that is going to apply to any quilt. So even though it's going to specifically, we're going to work on this quilt as we go, you guys don't have to make the quilt. You can be here. You can ask questions. It's totally fine. For those of you that are planning on making the modern logs, last week on my blog, I kind of gave some tips about starching and color and things like that. And I'll talk a little bit about that today as well. If you want to get the pattern, if you don't have it yet, you can just get it from my, uh, my shop, shop.christaquilts.com. And you can get the paper version, which I'm holding here, or you can get the PDF version from my Etsy website. But I just want to show you inside, for those who don't have it yet, all of my patterns, my printed patterns, are made. They're printed on this really full cover, heavy cardstock with very good detailed instructions, full color diagrams to really help you make this quilt. Um, sizes, machine quilting suggestions, and then several different sizes on the back. So I really try to make my patterns very thorough. And of course, I am making this quilt from my Good Vibes fabric, which many of you have purchased, thank you. If you're kind of on the fence or you're not sure if you wanna get it, this is the Fat Quarter Bundle that has 20 uh, beautiful dark saturated prints 
and uh, sorry, 10, 10 dark saturated prints, and then the 10 low volumes. And I'll talk a little bit about using both sides. Now you can use any fabrics you want. It does not have to be mine, even though you get bonus points if you use my fabric, but I've seen a couple people use different collections. If you want to just add some light fabrics to your stash, you can buy the bundle that's just lights. If you want just the darks, you can, add, you can buy the bundle that's just the darks or you can buy the complete bundle, it's up to you guys. So anyway, we're done with the commercial there. So let me just kind of check the comments, make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh yeah, you guys will see my family kind of walking by back and forth as people are popping in and out. Um, totally, this is totally real life. We're having a, we're actually having some plumbing work done as I speak because we're getting the pool done, which is one thing, but then our water heater went out today. So that was just another fun thing. So we're getting that fixed too. So, you know, people are gonna be coming and going, it's all good we roll with it and that's how it goes so anyway we'll go ahead now i'm going to share my screen talk to you guys about the modern logs quilt itself and also i will post this later this will be in the group so if you're watching it later not live that's totally fine and you can always come back to this and watch it later to kind of pick up the tips and tricks that i'm going to talk about so i'm going to share my screen and then once i share my screen it's going to be a little bit harder to see your comments I'm gonna check my phone, make sure my screen comes up. So you probably will see me in a little window and then you'll see kind of my little presentation pop up. So again, this is the Modern Logs quilt. Now let's talk a little bit about fabric colors and preparation. Like I said, you can follow along um, just to learn some tips, even if you aren't making the pattern. And I don't charge for these quilts alongs. I like them to be free. And then you guys can just buy the, the pattern and the fabric. Okay, I'm just checking. I'm kind of delaying to make sure everything's working and it's working. Okay, so next screen. So you can get the pattern. Um, let's talk about the fabrics. Again, this is my Good Vibes bundle, but any fabric will work. You just want your fabrics to be half light and half dark. Now I used fat quarters, but you can use jelly roll strips. You can use layer cakes. You can use scraps. You can use yardage. You can use any fabric you want because this is gonna be improv piecing. The sizes don't really matter. And when we get to the sewing later on, you can use lots of leftover pieces. For me, I like working with fat quarters just because it's a lot easier to work with. It's easier to cut. It's easier to um, wash. But most of my patterns, I like them to be very, very flexible. So you can absolutely use whatever fabrics you like. And depending on the size you're making, you know, if you're using the Good Vibes fabric, and you're making the smallest size, you need 20 fat quarters. If you're making the next size up, which is the cover, uh, the cover quilt size, then you need 40 fat quarters. And then if you're making the queen size, then you need 60 fat quarters, light and dark. So for my size, I used 40 fat quarters, 20 of them were light and 20 of them were dark. Now, what's a light, what's a dark, it's all relative. In my picture here, you can very clearly see that I've separated them into lights and darks. Um, but you can you can start with these and then you can add stuff from your stash. I always like to say, why use like one red fabric when 20 will do? So start with what you have, but feel free to add in. This quilt looks great the more fabrics that you use. All right, so going on to the next picture. Um, so this is a close up of fabric I actually used for another quilt, but notice notice at the bottom, do you see all those low volumes? That's the back side. So this fabric, it's much more subdued when you use the back side. And I challenge you guys, when you're picking out your lights and your darks, use both sides of your light fabric, because if you have 20 fabrics, well, if you use the the light side and the back side, that'll make that'll make sure you have 40 fabrics. So it just gives you more variety. You can use the front and the back of the same fabric in the same quilt. So that's my challenge for you. Make a test block. See if you like using both sides of the fabric just to kind of see the different results it's going to give you. Cool. All right. Just checking everything. Make sure we're, we're moving along. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is I want to show you in this picture. Hopefully you can see these examples of what it actually looks like. These are some of the blocks in the upper left hand uh, corner. You can see I've got three blocks. So starting in the upper left hand corner, the pattern goes light, dark, light, dark. And what I've done here is there's like a bright yellow in the center. The next log surrounding that is actually a low volume coral color, but it looks very pale because I've used the back side of that fabric. Look at the bottom of your screen and that center square, which is kind of white and coral, that's the front side. So in the, the block on the bottom, 
that light fabric in the middle is using the front side and that very same fabric is using the back side in the block on the top. Scooching over to the block on your right hand side, do you see that outer like orange fabric on the very outer edge of that block? That is the front side of that print. And again, look at the block down at the bottom and that same orange fabric has been used on the back side. So if you look for a minute at each of these blocks, some of them use the front of the fabric, some of them use the back of the fabric, and I've used the same fabric either in the front or the back. So all of that is to say, don't stress about perfection. In future, if you're ever sewing a quilt and you accidentally use the quote wrong side of the fabric, there's really no wrong side. It's just more intense or less intense. So all of this is to say, try both sides of the fabric, see what you like. The back side of any fabric is gonna give you much more contrast and it's gonna make it easier. And I see that Diane says that she regularly uses both sides. Yes, it's a really fun way to go. Now, while I'm on this screen, the other thing I want you guys to think about, we're, not, we're gonna cut out this week and then next week you guys are gonna start sewing your blocks. As you're gathering your fabrics and figuring out what you wanna use, Again, I talk about light and dark, you really want contrast. So kind of look in that one picture that has a lot of that yellow, that yellow fabric is quote, a dark when it's placed next to the lighter fabric, but I could use it as a light if I placed it next to a darker fabric. So here's another thing you're not gonna stress. You're gonna use half lights and half darks, but if you accidentally mix up some of your lights into the dark pile and some of your darks into the light pile, it's not gonna matter as long as every fabric that's touching every other has contrast. And even then, if you put two darks together, two lights together, it gives it a little bit more of what I call kind of a planned improv look. So the whole point of it, roughly half lights, half darks, but we're not gonna stress about that. The other thing, kind of thinking ahead, notice how there's little pops of color, pops of a different fabric in some of these blocks. If you run out of one fabric, that's okay. Just substitute it with something else. Um, I wanted to really use up all my scraps, so I use bits and pieces of other pieces to make some of my logs long enough. And I'll get into more detail that later. But just notice in these three example blocks, they're not all perfect. They're totally different. They have a different number of fabrics in each block and that's totally okay. So just kind of keep that in mind when you guys start uh, working on this. Now for my next thing, what I want to show you is I've done a little YouTube video. Some of you guys might've seen this. I have a longer version of this on my YouTube channel. This is kind of the short and sweet version. I do like to pre-wash my fabric. Um, that's personal preference, and then I like to starch it. So in a nutshell, what I'm gonna do right here, I'm gonna push play and I'm just gonna narrate this video. Hopefully it's not too choppy. So I have these two fat quarters, they're already washed, and I lay two at a time out on this really big board. I'm gonna spray them on one side. So I'm spraying the green, I'm gonna spray the blue, then I flip them over and I iron it from the back side. Now I started with the green as my first one, and then I'm gonna iron it. And by spraying it on one side and then ironing it from the other side, this allows the starch to penetrate the fabric. And so once I've sprayed and starched one side, I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. So I'm gonna starch again, because this is the second starch. One, one starch on one side, one on the other, flip them over. And then I'm gonna iron it again. By spraying both sides and ironing both sides, this gets a good amount of starch, makes the fat quarters nice and stiff to begin with. Now, I'm sure many of you guys are gonna be wondering about my uh, ironing board that I'm using. This is called a big board, and it is something I just bought online for about 100 bucks, and it fits right on top of my regular ironing board, giving me a lot of room to work. So anyway, I have, um, that was kind of a speeded up version. You can watch that video again with narration over on my YouTube channel. So that's what I do for every single fabric. I pre-wash it, I starch it, and then it's ready to cut. Okay, so cutting, 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 cutting. Um, this is our kind of our homework for this week. What we're doing is we're cutting wonky improv strips, but here's the key. Here's the difference between me and a lot of other people's improv. My improv will always have straight edges and straight sides. Now straight means they're not gonna waver and bow, and I'm always using a rotary cutter and a straight edge. However, notice how I have placed my ruler at an angle. The improv comes because this strip is not gonna be like any other strip. It might be like an inch on one end and three inches on the other end, and you're gonna have fun totally randomly slicing and dicing and cutting these up. Now, this is why I wanted you guys to use fat quarters, because if you have a long 22 inch or 24 inch ruler, 
it fits nicely on top of a fat quarter. Now, if you are using yardage and your yardage was folded in half and you cut a wonky angle like this, you would have like a ribbon because by the time you open it up, you have a big chunky ribbon in the middle, which you could cut that in half, but it's much easier to actually cut the fat quarters and I'm cutting them the long way. In other words, if the fat quarter is 18 by 22, I wanna get 20 to 22 inch strips. Um, if you have scraps, you could cut it the other way where your scraps are maybe 10 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, that's not the end of the world. But by making the most use out of these fat quarters, I'm gonna cut these long strips. Now, we did have a question earlier, um, uh, Carmen was asking, um, she was wanting to know, do I have to, because we're going to cut these wonky, do I have to square up my fat quarters? Absolutely not. What I would do is I would trim off the end of the fat quarter if there's like any like loose threads, but it does not have to be a straight cut at all. You can cut, make fun cuts any way you like. So let me show you the next slide. And this is one set of fat quarters cut up. And all I did was take the ruler back and forth and I angled it a bunch of different times to get these different funky cuts. Now, one thing you'll want to do, these kind of look like wedges or like pie pieces. You'll kind of want them to go every other end so that you're not cutting a whole bunch of uh, points and, and losing, you know, losing your tips. The other thing I recommend is only cut between two to four layers at a time. Right here, I've stacked up four fat quarters. And so for each of these cuts I make, I'm going to have four strips of fabric that are that exact size, but they're all going to be different fabrics. So let's say I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got eight strips out of this fat quarter. You want to have a wide variety of strips to work with, but maybe you cut out nine strips or you cut out six strips or seven strips. It's not going to matter because the wider your strips are that you cut, the fewer logs you're going to have on your blocks. The skinnier your strips are, the, the uh, more strips you're going to have. And in the pattern itself, I kind of talk about you know, how many to cut and how many you need and, you know, depending on the number of blocks you need, but you're going to have plenty. You'll have leftovers also. So kind of be a little cavalier with this. Don't stress about it too much. You just want to make them big enough so that you can sew them together. And in fact, sometimes what I'll do is I might only start off by cutting half of the fat quarter and leaving the rest intact and then coming at, coming back and cutting more strips, um, cutting some strips wider and then cutting them in half later. So there's not too much rhyme or reason other than cut straight strips all the way across your fat quarter. So I hope that makes sense. Um, as you guys are cutting, it'll kind of make sense and it gets easier each time. So stack two to four layers, cut these really easy wonky strips. And when you're done, what I like to do is I like to keep all the light fabrics together. So going back to this previous, I have like four light or low volume fat quarters stacked on top of each other. And once I did all the cuts, I grabbed all of this light uh, teal fabric and all, let's see what colors, and then the light orange and the light blue and that, um, and that red. And so that stack represents four fat quarters already cut up. And you can see that each strip of the same fabric is a slightly different angle, a slightly different width, but I stack them all up together so that when I'm ready to sew these together, I have all the same fabric. Because just like a regular log cabin, um, this is a log cabin in which each round of logs uses the same fabric. Some people do log cabins where half of the block is uh, light and half of the block is dark, and you could so certainly do that too. The way I'm doing it is each round of fabric is the same fabric. So you'll see that when we start sewing it next week. So just keep them together. Um, don't worry if the ends, um, if the ends are clean or not because you're going to cut all that stuff off. So as long as you have strips that have straight ang straight edges on two sides, the angle is not going to matter at all. Hopefully that makes sense. And again, if you guys are having questions, type them out, hit send when you see my face full screen, and then we can have some more chat about that. Okay, don't forget the centers. Again, the pattern itself is going to tell you how many of these need that you need. Basically, the centers are going to be the centers of your blocks. Again, half of them are going to be light, half of them are going to be dark. When I first started the quilt, I was going to make the smaller size, and so I, I only cut up one fat quarter bundle, um, but then by the time I started sewing, I immediately knew I wanted to make the quilt bigger, so I kind of doubled the amount. But the nice thing about this design is you can always add more fabrics anytime. Now, kind of thinking ahead, when you get to the very end, because this is very improv, like you're going to start with half light centers and half dark centers. However, each block is going to be completely unique. 
Each block is going to have a different number of logs. And so you're not going to end up with half light and half dark at the end. What I mean by that is you're going to do half of your centers are going to be light. Half of your centers are going to be dark. But if you start with the light center, it does not mean that you end with a light outer strip and vice versa. You might start with a dark center for one block and that block might have seven rounds of strips and end on a dark as the outer or you might start with the dark center and then another block has eight strips and so that block ends with a light trust me don't overthink it don't overanalyze it by starting with half light and half dark centers it's roughly equivalent it's roughly the same but each block is going to be unique and and the outer logs are not going to be even that's what i'm trying to say so don't worry about it if if you uh if you haven't realized the theme of this is improv and fun and it ends up looking beautiful. I have taught this class for uh, several years. In fact, this is a remake of a pattern that I originally did a long, long time ago, and it turns out great every single time. So just trust the process, give into it, give into the whimsy and have fun with that. So when you're done, so your homework for this week is to cut out your centers, to cut your fat quarters, then I recommend that you sort them into your lights and darks like I have here. And if you've got room to work, if you've got a nice big table that can help, I set up a couple TV trays uh, where I've got my strips. I've got all my light strips and all my dark strips. This is gonna turn into a big mess. So don't stress about it. But if you can kind of clean it up as you go, it'll help keep you guys organized. I think that's my last uh, image. So let me stop sharing my screen. Whew, that was a lot of information, right? A lot of info. So now if you guys have questions about anything I just talked about, feel free. We're about 20 minutes into it. I'm happy to stick around for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you guys need. And again, you guys can come back and uh, check this out a little bit later. So again, this week's homework, uh, gather your fabrics, pre-wash if you want to, cut out all your strips, read through the pattern, you know, so you kind of know what's coming up. And then next week, we'll actually sew the blocks. Now, one thing um, that I like to let you guys know, you guys can work ahead. If you want to start sewing your blocks, you absolutely can. I'm going to do this kind of over the next seven weeks to give you guys enough time. We're going to make the blocks. We're going to sew the top. We're going to baste it. We're going to quilt it. We're going to bind it. We're going to do the whole thing. So now I'm going to start looking through your questions and I'm going to answer them. And I'm, I've kind of got it on my screen and also on my phone. So I may or may not be able to see your name. Oh, someone wanted to know which, which Bernina do you use? I see it in the background. This um, lovely quilt, uh, area over here. That's my Bernina um, 770 QE. For those of you guys that don't know, I am a Bernina ambassador. So if anybody, I don't sell them, but if anybody's in the market for one and you want to have like a private consultation with me, um, I'm allowed to give you a little incentive. And that's all I can say about it in public. But if you ever want to have a private free consultation with me to talk about Bernina, I can absolutely do that and help you guys get the machine that you want because I love it for everything. So, um, oh, uh, how are the centers cut? So uh, in the pattern, I talk about it, but I can kind of give you a little more tips. The centers are cut very similar to how the strips are cut. They all have straight angles, but they can be wonky. That sounds like an oxymoron. What I mean is you're just going to cut a wonky strip and then you're going to cut a little chunk off the end of that strip. So use a ruler the whole time. You want your centers to be a little bit bigger than your strips. But as you noticed in my picture a few a little bit ago, they're all different sizes. And so, again, if you have a larger center square, then you're going to have probably have fewer blocks to sew around it. If you start off with a smaller center square, then you'll have more blocks. Um, but start off with a good, you know, a good chunk. And I kind of give you numbers in the pattern on what a good size that you want your squares to be. Um, how do you cut your, how do you cut your center blocks? Okay. Yeah. You guys both kind of asked that. Um, in the pattern, there's a picture of it in the pattern. So refer to the pattern either on page two or three that actually shows you cutting. I like to give you guys a lot of tips, but I don't want to give too much away because I still want you guys to buy the pattern. But yeah, there's a, there's some good diagrams in the pattern showing um, how you cut those centers. So I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are asking these questions. Um, Okay, I have a question also um, from before that Barbara had wanted to know. She said, I normally never wash my fabrics before quilting and I seldom starch them, even bias cuts. What do you think will happen if I don't do this step? Is it really necessary? And I love that she asked that because you guys, anytime I teach you about quilting or piecing or anything, I'm giving you uh, tips that work according to Krista. You can completely ignore what I say. You can take what I say and add it to something you do. You can do the opposite of what I, what I say. 
you are the boss of your quilt. So if you find a method that works for you, go ahead and stick with that. If you want to try new things, you can try my tips, but I'm not the quilt police. I'm not the end all be all. These are just things that I work. So back to that. The reason why I like to pre-wash my fabrics is number one, it shrinks them up. Number two, it gets rid of any excess dye because even as me being a fabric designer and you know working with high quality fabric, if you, you know, depending on the detergent you use, depending on your um, water hardness, all kinds of things, even the most expensive fabric can bleed. So if you launder it and pre-wash it ahead of time, you're going to take care of a lot of those problems. Now, when you're washing small amounts of fabric like fat quarters, I like to use a garment mesh bag so that it doesn't get all like janky and messed up. Um, and then I do starch it like I showed earlier in the video. But again, that's up to you. If you don't want to pre-wash your fabric, then definitely recommend washing the quilt with several color catchers like three or four to make sure that you get any of that excess dye out so that's always like a fun debate but in my experience I have had quilts that bleed and maybe it was just user error but um, since that happened to me I'm like I always pre-wash the only time I don't pre-wash is if I'm using pre-cuts and then I make sure to use the the color catchers at the end oh someone wanted to know um, any special brand of starch in the video that I showed earlier and you guys can go back and watch that um, I just use what's called faultless premium starch it's like two or three bucks at the grocery store some people like best press or flatter any of those will work anything you like I like the cheap stuff and I use a lot of it so I can go through several cans. You know, I, um, I'm trying to think it, I can probably get through maybe about two or three, maybe two quilts on one can of starch, but I use a lot of starch. I use a lot of basting spray, which that'll, we'll get to that in a couple of weeks. So because I use so much, I just got to go with the cheap stuff, cheap stuff. Otherwise, you know, it would, it would cost a little bit too much. Um, okay. So is the center cut off the end of every strip? No. No, basically you need as many centers for as many blocks. So when you refer to the pattern, you can make the smaller size, the medium size, or the large size. And those numbers are given in the pattern with how many blocks you need. So for example, if you're making 12 blocks, then you need to have 12 block centers. And if you're only using 12 fabrics, then you would want to cut one block center um, from each fabric, okay? but you know, if you're using 12 fabrics, you know, then one fabric, you're going to have like 10 or 12 or 15 strips of that fabric. So you only want as many block centers as as the total number of blocks you're making. Does that sound, does that sound right? Hopefully I'm not confusing you guys too much. Um, also, the other thing is if you guys have questions while you're doing it this week, you guys can um, absolutely ask them in the Facebook or even all, and I will read, um, get back to them. Oh, someone wants to know you have the 2015 uh, pattern. It's very similar. Uh, when I re-released this pattern, um, I tightened up the directions a little bit. Um, I changed up the sizes and I made it more efficient because after making this quilt, I realized in the 2015 one, I actually gave you too much fabric. I mean, not like that's a problem, right? We can have leftover. But in this, in the new and improved modern logs version, um, it uses less fabric basically. And then the leftovers are on the back. So, but if you have the pattern from the, it'll be fine. I'll just be referring to a different number of blocks than you will, but the, the basic technique is the same. So that's okay. So I like to help you guys however I can. Um, I'm, I'm double checking. If, um, if you have asked me a question and I haven't answered it yet, go ahead and type it. That means I just missed it. I will go back and answer all of the other questions, but I just want to make sure I'm getting to everybody's questions with you guys. So this week is really pretty simple. Like I said, it's just preparing the fabrics and it's just cutting out the, won I call them wonky wedges. So kind of give it a try. You know, I challenge you guys to use the front and the back of your fabric. It'll kind of, you know, be fun. If you're a little intimidated or you're unsure, maybe don't cut out all your fabrics. Maybe only cut out um, a few of them to start. And then as we go through and make some blocks next week, then you'll get more comfortable with the process and you can kind of see like, oh, okay, now I'm ready to, you know, be more confident with my cutting. Um, all right. I think I've got everybody's questions. I'll give you guys another minute or two just in case. Like I said, this week, this um, weekly check-in is going to be for me to just give you, kind of bring some of the tips and tricks to life, go over them with you as if I were with you in class. If we were in a real live class, this is what I would tell you. I would have step outs and I would have images up on a screen that I just showed you. And I'd say, okay, this is the step we're going to do now. No, Now go and sew for a couple hours or go for, you know, go and cut. Um, 
honestly, when I was cutting out my fat quarters, I used 40 fat quarters. I used 20 light fat quarters, 20 dark. It took me maybe about an hour to cut it all out. You know, it really didn't take that long. That was stacking four layers at a time, not overthinking it and just zip, 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 you know, rotary cutting. Um, if you guys need extra bonus help with actually rotor cutting itself, I know there's a bazillion YouTube tutorials out there. Someday in the future, I will, you know, do a tutorial on rotor, rotary cutting. But with the fat quarters, you don't have to fold anything. You just plop them down on your cutting table. Nothing has to be exact. It's really, really forgiving and, and uh, carefree. So, um, okay, so someone else has a question. Oh, I want the throw size, which on the old old pattern, but not the new. Oh, yes, okay, if you wanna do the throw size, then go ahead. What I recommend is just buy the PDF version um, from Etsy because it's a little bit cheaper because I don't have to ship it to you. And then you can just download it. Like I said, the technique is the same, but the number of fat quarters that you need is, is different it's more economical in the newer version and so you know it, it's only 10 bucks on Etsy so you know it's up to you um okay starch oh you said two to three quilts per can I just use three cans for starching my ear like hey you're <laughs> go for it <laughs> it just depends on how big and you know how much fabric you've got I guess maybe I didn't include the backing in that Okay, but yeah, um, and the starch is going to come out, you know, so if you if you wash your quilt when it's finished, the starch will come out. Um, I will debunk one myth, though, that some people say, they say, oh, don't starch your fabric because like bugs can get to it and they like it. I've never had an issue with bugs. Um, when I am starching my fabric, I only starch as much as I think I'm going to need, you know, so I don't like, you know, starch yards and yards and yards of it. And if there's um, starch left over on my scraps and I throw it in my scrap pile, that's not a big deal either. But um, even though even though I made this completely out of fat quarters, like I said, if you guys have a fat quarter bundle and maybe it doesn't have enough fat quarters, then just, you know, grab some scraps and just kind of supplement it. This pattern is very, very uh, forgiving. So again, you can get the Modern Logs pattern at shop.kristaquilts.com or Krista Quilts on Etsy. Um, the PDF is nice because you have is instant access, but this is nice because you can actually have it by your side. What some people do is they'll buy both versions of it. So one can be on the computer, one at home, and that's totally fine too. Um, oh, you like the cardboard. Okay, yeah, yeah. I like that it's like a stiffer because again, this is, I'll kind of show it to you guys. A lot of times uh, pattern makers will just print off a piece of paper and then just put a picture on top of it. This is actually, all of my patterns are like this. They're called uh, saddle stitched, which it's staple. So it's actually like a booklet. You know, this one is, it's like a 12 page booklet with heavy cardboard. So this is gonna hold up and, and really nice glossy pages. And the, uh, the printed pattern is $12 with free shipping. The PDF is 10 because you don't have to worry about, you know, you don't have to worry about the paper. But anyway, um, I really like them and all of my patterns are like that way. So, okay, I think I got everybody's questions. We didn't need to go super long today, but again, if you're watching this after the fact, go ahead and ask me questions all week long. I'm here for you guys anytime. Oh, cutting this is gonna be out of your comfort zone. You know what, good. Because you know what, you could just pie a pattern and do it on your own. But if I'm here leading you, encouraging you, it'll be really fun. So I have a challenge for you guys. Those of you guys that are watching this now or later, once you cut out your fat quarters, please post a picture of them in the Facebook group so we can see, you know, maybe one of you, maybe Michelle, maybe when you cut your boutique fat quarters, you know, maybe you cut 10 strips out of one. And um, maybe Beth Ann, when you work on yours, maybe you only cut five strips. And it's just kind of fun to see. It's like we're together in a virtual class. So as soon as you guys cut out your fat quarters, even if you just cut one fat quarter to try, throw up a picture of it, we'll cheer you guys on. And let us know honestly, like if it's out of your comfort zone to cut this way, try it and see how it feels. Because here's another thing I like to teach. It's just as important to know what you do like as what you don't like. So if you cut all your fat quarters, you're like, oh my gosh, that was like giving me hives. I will say yay for you for trying something new and that's okay. Others of you, you might find that you love this process and you wanna do more improv. This whole thing that we're doing is called structured improv. You're gonna start with wonky pieces. Your blocks are gonna be all cattywampus. They're not all gonna be the same size. Then the structured part comes at the end when we trim the blocks down, they all end up being the same size, it all works, and we work with these nice, clean edge strips, so it ends up working really well. Um, oh yes, and you're, yeah, especially if you're not doing scrappy, um, I totally agree with you on that. 
Okay, I'm gonna go and sign off now and go check on my. Uh, like I said, we had a we had our a water heater that went out, so we had to buy another water heater today. Eh. So buy more patterns so I can pay for that water heater we just had to pay for, and then maybe take a hot shower. That'll be really really nice. So anyway, thanks guys for hanging out with me. We will be doing this again next Tuesday. 3 p.m. Pacific, and I'll do the same format. I'll show some pictures. I'll walk you guys through the process, tell you where you can find more in the pattern. And I'm really glad you guys joined me today. Have a great day. Ta-ta for now.